Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video I'd like to discuss about something really, really important that is often overlooked today, especially when we talk about COVID. We talk about all these uh, other conditions, but we forget about tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is still a major condition, a condition which leaves people with a lot of complications sometimes, and it can be quite hard to treat, especially if we pick it up late. There is, of course, more complexity to this, and this is why I'm making this video, because I'd like to make you aware of a couple of things, and especially about symptoms to look out for, because it's good to go see your doctor early if you suspect you might have to be. And depending on where you are in the world, you may be exposed to more or less tuberculosis. But tuberculosis in today's society can actually affect anyone. It doesn't really matter anymore if you're poor, if you're rich, if you're in a developed country or a less developed country, you still can get it. As an individual, you can still get it, even though it may be more common in certain places around the world and in certain individuals who, for example, have a more complicated social environment. Tuberculosis is a complex condition. It doesn't only affect the lungs. So in this video, I will mention the symptoms of pulmonary tuberculosis because that's generally the tuberculosis that can can be, let's say, transmitted. Because tuberculosis, at the end of the day, is a lung infection. However, that infection can sometimes spread beyond the lungs. So a person who has, has pulmonary tuberculosis can also develop, for example, tuberculosis in the gut, or tuberculosis in the joints, or in the lymph nodes, in the pleura. It can be anywhere in the body, really, especially if it's left untreated for a very long time and it gets to the bloodstream, and then it can really go anywhere. So this makes it a complex condition. I'd like to speak a little bit about symptoms, things to look out for for pulmonary or lung tuberculosis, because I think that's the main thing to, to keep in mind. Most people do get lung tuberculosis when they get it, and it's important to recognize the symptoms. Generally, someone who suffers with tuberculosis will have a cough, a cough that can sometimes be productive. So you're bringing up a little bit of phlegm, and you've had that cough maybe for a few months. And you don't, you can't seem to shake it. But it's not only the cough, because many people have coughs for various reasons. Generally, people who suffer with tuberculosis, in addition to the cough, they start to lose weight. Because it's a chronic infection, there's something going on in the lung, and that infection consumes energy. It requires nutrition. It steals some of the nutrition you're eating. So basically, to fight the disease, your body uses a lot of energy. So many patients who suffer with tuberculosis, they are coughing and they are losing weight despite eating a normal diet. In addition to this, because there is inflammation in the lung, there may be a sensation of having low-grade fever. So you might have a little bit of shivering, things like that. You might wake up with night sweats. So that's again an indication that there's inflammation going on. So, so these are symptoms that is important to try to keep in mind. And I would say that if you are losing weight, you don't know why you're losing weight, you are coughing, you are maybe sweating at night, I would say it's a good indication to go see your doctor. Another thing that I'd like to mention, and this is also part of the complexities of tuberculosis, is the fact that tuberculosis is one of these infections that's really, really strange, because you can start off with a TB infection, and that infection may not turn into a disease straight away. So this is something that's very hard to understand and, and even healthcare professionals sometimes miss this point because you can get infected, you can inhale the Koch bacillum, the bacterium that causes tuberculosis, and it may linger in your lungs for years until you actually develop the disease. And this is very, very strange because your immune system and this bacterium, they have a sort of a, a little war going on. So you have the infection that's maybe at a very low level in the lungs, and you have the immune system that manages to keep it there. So it doesn't really turn into a full-blown infection, and we call this a latent TB infection. And this latent infection gives you absolutely no symptoms. You will never know that you have it. You cannot give it to anyone else because it's so small. There's only a little bit of bacteria that's multiplying in the lungs and it's being kept under control by your immune system. It keeps it in check. However, something may happen years after the initial infection and you may develop a full-blown TB. 
TB disease. So basically, this is different than the TB latent infection. This is TB disease. And that's when you get the symptoms that I mentioned before. And this interval of time between the moment of infection and the moment you develop the disease can sometimes be years. Sometimes it can be months, but it's very, very different from each person. Not everyone who gets a latent TB infection also develops the disease. Many people actually clear that latent infection without any treatment. So some people might actually have a strong enough immune system that it gets rid of the latent TB infection without any medication, without any sign, without any symptom. It just sort of disappears slowly over time. Some people may have a test for tuberculosis at some point. So they may have a blood test or one of those skin prick tests, basically. And they find out that they have a latent TB infection. They have no symptoms. Their chest x-ray is absolutely clear, but they have the latent TB infection and they get treatment with maybe one or two of the medications for TB and they clear that latent TB infection. So that's another possibility. But these things that I'm saying to you are just to emphasize the fact that tuberculosis is a, very, is a very complex disease. And it's important to bear in mind the symptoms of tuberculosis because it can hit anyone. In today's world, like I mentioned, imagine that there's this fight between your immune system and this uh, little bacterium that's multiplying in your lungs. So in today's world, we have a lot of, for example, medications that reduce the immune response. And we give these medications for different types of diseases. For, for example, for autoimmune disease, for rheumatic disease. Sometimes people are on long-term immunosuppressants. And immunosuppressants reduce the effect of the immune response in controlling TB. And sometimes TB can come back. So they, it can be reactivated by us taking a medication that reduces the immune response. So this is another important aspect. For example, another aspect would be the fact that patients who suffer with HIV infection, which also is an infection which affects the immune system, they're very at risk of developing tuberculosis because the immune system cannot keep the bacterium in check. Or also, now, nowadays, people are living longer, sometimes with quite severe chronic conditions. So patients with liver disease, chronic liver disease, chronic kidney disease, diabetes, they live longer. But these patients, they sometimes have a weaker immune response compared to, to individuals without these conditions. And that can put them at risk for tuberculosis. So what I'm trying to suggest is the fact that even though you're not perhaps in a high-risk TB area, you can still potentially get this condition. And it's important to know the symptoms and not forget that tuberculosis has been there in the world for as long as we've been here. And what I'm trying to say is that basically because anyone can get tuberculosis, it's quite important to not forget that it exists. Despite not being the most trendy disease, let's say. It's not a disease that many people discuss. There's not a lot of advocacy around tuberculosis. Everyone considers that tuberculosis is a disease of the poor, which I think is, is a terrible assumption. And also it's considered to be a disease of poor countries. And I think, again, that's a terrible assumption because if we are not investing in the treatment, in the detection and the early treatment of TB, especially in areas of the world where tuberculosis is present at a high level, that tuberculosis will travel around the world. And I think we've all seen what happens with what happened with COVID. COVID started off as a limited sort of infection in China, and then it spread throughout the world. It paralyzed society. So we need to be really careful. Now, TB will never do that. TB is a, one of these conditions that even when you're infected, you have a very, very slow progression of your disease. But that doesn't mean that it cannot reach far and wide. So I hope this video was helpful. All the best to you and good health.